Hello, welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are making pumpkin bread cookies, a delicious festive fall treat that you might not realize that you need in your life. A recipe that I kind of quickly stumbled upon because I had to make them, well, I didn't have to make them, but I had a work potluck and I was like, well, I need to make something and it should be fall festive. So I did some quick Googling and I, I think these are probably like one of the top ones. So I was like, that seems simple enough. Let's make that, give it a go. And let me tell you, these are delicious. However, they were a little surprising because I didn't actually read the full title and I just thought they were pumpkin cookies. And when I ate them, I'm like, man, these are really like light and fluffy and like airy. They, it has a very, you know, bread-like consistency to it, like how I'd imagine pumpkin bread would uh, kind of taste and feel. And then when I was prepping, because I mean, once I had them, I was like, oh, I got to make these for the, got to make it for the channel. And when I was doing the prep work of like actually rereading the recipe, that's when I saw bread in the title of the pumpkin bread cookies. And I was just like, oh, that makes so much sense now. So you might not be quite as surprised by that kind of texture experience, but let me tell you, they are worth making. And you don't have to just take my word for it because I, well, I mean, for right now you will, but... <laughs> But I have, you know, well over a dozen people vouching for me that these are very tasty. And so hopefully you, you know, give them a go after seeing this video because they're all super simple to make. Pretty much the prep work of putting the dough together takes about as much time as it will for your oven to preheat. You know, you might not believe me. So why don't we run through the greens and get into cooking and you'll see just how simple they are to make. Sugar. Flour. Butter pumpkin puree, baking soda, an egg, vanilla extract, salt, pumpkin pie spice, cinnamon, maple syrup, powdered sugar, and milk. The first step is going to be to mix together the pumpkin puree and the baking soda. A little chemical reaction is going to happen here, very similar to like vinegar and baking soda in one of those like paper mache volcanoes, but pumpkin is way less acidic than vinegar. So it's not going to be as crazy, but there will be, I believe, CO2 released. And that's going to actually act as a leavening agent in the uh, the cookies later on when we're actually baking them. So for this chemical correction to happen, we need to let it sit together for at least two minutes before we incorporate it with all the other ingredients. And since we're doing it first, there should be plenty of time before we need it in the later steps. Next, we're going to mix together all of the dry ingredients. So that's the flour, the salt, the pumpkin spice, and the cinnamon. Just gonna put that in a bowl, mix it all up. Super simple. Next, we're going to cream the butter and the sugar together in a bowl. My butter is gonna look a little bit different than your butter, I hope, because I forgot to leave mine out to kind of get up to room temperature and soften. So I threw it in the microwave and it melted instead of softened. So then I threw it in the freezer and it was just kind of like a game of trying to get to the right consistency. But all of that could be alleviated if I just left it out on my counter for a few hours beforehand. So a little bit of forethought will save you a lot of uh, headache in, in this particular step. Now we're going to mix in the pumpkin puree kind of mix that we had from earlier. And just as a reminder, at least two minutes should have passed before you're doing this step. Now, because I made light decisions and I didn't do this in a stand mixer, slowly add in the dry ingredients because in this bowl, using a hand mixer, if you dumped all the dry ingredients in there, flour will just go everywhere. So slow and steady is going to win the race here or making better life choices earlier. Now just scoop the dough onto a baking sheet lined with parchment paper you know, cookie scoop would be ideal, but if you don't have one like me, just a big spoon in your finger does the job. And now we're going to bake the cookies at 350 for 15 minutes. Now, while the cookies are baking, we can make the glaze, just small bowl, put all the ingredients in there, stir it up. Now we're going to drizzle the glaze on top of the still warm cookies and then you're done. Easy as that. All right, so here we have them looking great. I'm excited to try these. 
And like I said in the intro, other people have said these are great, but you might not believe me because you're only really getting my opinion. So I brought in my friend Pete to be a unbiased third party. Excited to be here. Happy to taste these. And yeah, you should I know about these. So, I mean, I, I know you're my biggest fan watching every single video. Every time. <laughs> and so if you're making these, I would recommend only glazing them kind of as you're eating them. So like in my situation, you need them uh, just for me. I've only glazed them as I'm going. But if you were to make them for an event, I would say glaze them like you don't have to do it a lot ahead of time. But like if you're making them in the evening and the event is like tomorrow afternoon, just wake up, glaze them in the morning and you should be good to go. Why is that? So the texture of these, because they're a pumpkin bread cookie, is much is very similar to bread. So it, it's very absorbent. Oh, the glaze will kind of absorb in and then leave. It doesn't make it taste bad. It just appearance wise looks a little like like you spilled bread. right right and could you could you glaze them and freeze them or something like that to prevent it from soaking in so that's a great question and when i made these because i made a handful to you know make it look a little picturesque for the video i i glazed a few and i'm not going to eat that many that i kind of showed in the camera so i popped them in the refrigerator and and they kept pretty great like so keeping them cold the glaze will not kind of like melt them get absorbed in got it if, if you do keep it cold it will be good it does make the kind of bread texture a little bit more dense so leave them out for a little bit to kind of warm up but yeah it's kind of a fine line for that okay. because as they're warming up the glaze is going to to also warm up in them and so again exactly got it all right, all right. so I, I think that's all the info that you know little tips and tricks so why don't we give these a taste test and see uh how i did all right let's see okay so what you think of that yeah so i this is my second cookie i've already gone through one Tremendous flavor. You can taste the pumpkin. You can taste the glaze separately. They don't just sort of mix. You can still taste it fully light and fluffy. You know, it's great to finally taste, I think, the the actual work of the chef, but but genuinely really tasty, really great. Um and, and has again a good a good pumpkin kick. Obviously you would expect that, but but not not overpowering either. It it's it's still uh still, you know, tastes full body and everything through. So good work. I like it a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, because it has pumpkin puree in there as well as pumpkin spice. So you get kind of different aspects of that. I mean, obviously pumpkin spice doesn't actually have pumpkin in it, it but it, it's what reminds you of like a bread pie. And you can you can taste the spice, but it's not overbearing. It, again, it's, it's sort of complements it. It's, uh, so it, it comes together really well. Uh, high quality. Yeah. Like it a lot. Yeah. And then the other thing that like I really thought made these cookies stand out a little bit, but that's because I wasn't fully expecting it, was the texture because these are pumpkin bread cookies in my head, when I first had them, I thought it was some pumpkin cookies. So the Latin of that kind of like crunch caught me off guard a little bit, but like it being kind of soft and fluffy, I've read was a, a pretty tasty experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's not, I was not crunchy at all. Very soft. It has, you know, enough that you can bite through it, but, uh, you know, it remains soft all in, you know, in the mouth as well. So it's really great sort of texture in that process. Perfect. Perfect. Up. Awesome. Well, get to bake. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully this has inspired you to to make them yourself, and hopefully it's inspired everybody to make them themselves, themselves at home. Because like I said a few times, super simple. Like just pretty much throwing stuff into a bowl, and then you're good to go. Probably like 15 minutes to prep it all, and then however long it takes to to go through the baking process, depending on how big your your baking sheet is. Yeah, but yeah. So some more. All right. Good stuff. Yeah. All right. I thought you were going to wait by to your mom first. I was going to have them leave and then I'd be by them. Okay. Well, I wanted to wait by to my mom's mom, but okay. Well, we can, we can, we can wait by to your mom. Okay, I'd like to wait by to your mom. Logan. Okay. Bye, Mo. Still not dead. See ya. Bye, Aaron's mom. Still alive. Bye. You didn't know it, but he is alive. There's no 20 bucks. You have the 20 bucks. You just take the leftover to the pig and we'll call it anything. All right. Appreciate it. Fair of it. No, no, no.